Hey y'all, it's Donna. It is raining terribly outside. I can't do any garden work, I can't do any yard work, I can't work in the greenhouse, so I'm stuck in the house today, and it turns out to be a good day to do some cooking. Right now I'm gonna make some mac and cheese. It's actually a baked mac and cheese. Who doesn't love baked mac and cheese? My family, which is a large family, loves baked mac and cheese. I don't ever do the boxed uh, mac and cheese. I just do the full-blown, um, from scratch, baked mac and cheese. Now, one thing I will tell you is if I take my mac and cheese to any function uh, around friends or when we did, you know, school events and stuff, everybody loved this baked mac and cheese. But one thing I do know, I will never take it around a family function. Not because it's not good, but because my Aunt Snooky makes the best mac and cheese. There's no way in the world I'm a smart person. I am not going to take a baked mac and cheese to a family function where she always brings her baked mac and cheese, which is delicious and everybody loves it. I'm smart enough not to compete with her. So anyways, um, I'm going to share this recipe and I'm preheating the oven at 400 degrees. That's already going on in the background. I've already got my noodles boiled. I've already got my ingredients laid out to speed up the process a little bit. But I will go ahead and tell you what the ingredients are. One tablespoon of butter. I'm going to melt this in the microwave. And I'm going to do three eggs that are slightly beaten. I do them all in individual bowls. Just slightly beat them because you want to add them separately. I'm going to use three cups of shredded cheese. You can use any kind of cheese that you want. I use a mix. There's, I don't know, there's several different kinds of cheese mixed in here. You can use any kind that you want, just as long as it's three cups of cheese. I'm going to do a half a cup of sour cream. I've got that measured out. I'm going to use a 10 and a half ounce can of condensed cheddar cheese. This, this is by Campbell's. I'm going to use bacon bits. I'm going to use a pinch of salt and a lot of pepper. I'm going to use, I've already got this measured out, 1 8 teaspoon of ground mustard. That's pretty much it. So it's the butter, the grated cheese, the uh, three eggs beaten separately, half cup of sour cream, a 10 ounce can of condensed cheese, a half a cup of milk, or heavy cream. Oh, I've already got that measured out. Now that half cup is going to be plus or minus, depending on how creamy and wet that you want your mac and cheese to be. I use a half a cup and sometimes I, I don't even use that full half cup. That's a personal choice. I'm going to mix all of this up in a fairly large bowl because it, it just makes it easier to get it all mixed. And then I'm going to put it in this. This is an old style uh, Pyrex bowl. It's pretty good size. I, I don't know the size. It's not written on it, but it holds a lot. It's pretty good size. And I need that for this particular recipe. And um, it's going to be sprayed with Pam inside so that all that ooey gooey cheese does not stick to the bowl. Um, now this recipe can be cut in half. I have done that and it works out fine where, you know, sometimes when you cut a recipe in half, it just doesn't come out right. This is one of the recipes that does fine cutting it in half if you want a smaller amount. This does make a large bowl. I've already got my noodles boiled and drained, and so I'm going to add those first. They're nice and hot. Now you can cook your noodles completely, or you can cook them halfway. They will do fine because they're going to bake in the oven and they are going to continue to cook. To these noodles, I'm going to add my butter, which is one tablespoon 
of butter. And I do use unsalted butter. I'm going to add my eggs one at a time and mix them in. This is the second egg. It really makes a difference when you add them one egg at a time. I can't tell you why, but it does. And then the third egg. Now I'm going to add my sour cream, and this is a half cup. The sour cream really makes it very creamy. You're not going to taste a sour cream flavor. But it does, it does help it to be very creamy. Now, one thing I have noticed over time, one of my girls would make this and maybe they forgot something or we were out of something like sour cream. You can't taste it when it's in there, but you can sure tell it's missing when it's not. I'm going to add one eighth teaspoon of ground mustard. That's one of the things you can't tell is in there, but you can sure tell if it's missing. My husband and my kids will not touch a box of mac and cheese. They only like baked mac and cheese. Now I'm going to add the cheddar cheese in the uh, can. get that mixed in and it helps to work kind of fast so that those noodles don't cool down because that the hot noodles help keep everything kind of liquid especially when you start adding the cheese now I'm going to add the cheese three cups of cheese starts getting thick and you have to put a little more effort into getting it mixed and blended. This is so good. It is one of my favorite side dishes. So creamy and it's a feel-good food. If you want to lift your spirits, make a big dish of baked mac and cheese. Now I'm going to add my milk, just a little at a time. Because I don't always use all of it. The consistency of the cheese makes a difference. And you don't want too much milk or it'll be runny and won't set up real good. I guess I can use all of it this time. Just a little dab of salt. You don't want much because it will, between the other ingredients, it can easily become too salty, especially if you salt your noodles. Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't whenever I'm cooking my noodles. But lots of pepper, enough pepper that you can see the flakes of pepper when you're done with it all being mixed up. So 
that's it for this recipe. So I'm just going to verify everything. I have one tablespoon of butter, melted butter, three cups of grated cheese or shredded cheese, three large eggs beaten and added separately, a half a cup of sour cream, one ten and a half ounce can of condensed cheese, a half a cup of milk or heavy cream. I don't have any heavy cream today, but heavy cream really does make it very creamy. An eighth teaspoon of dry mustard, three cups of cooked noodles, I'm going to put bacon bits on it, and a pinch of salt and lots of pepper. So now I have a bowl that's already sprayed with Pam, and I'm just going to put it all in here. You can use any kind of dish that will hold this amount. You can use a, a square casserole dish, an oblong dish, any kind of baking dish. I use this when it's kind of my mac and cheese bowl. Because we like how thick it is when we cut the servings out. Just going to spread this around nice and pretty and then I'm going to top it with bacon bits. Everybody's oven is different so I can only tell you it's approximately 30 to 40 minutes in the oven. You'll be able to look at it and tell. You want it golden brown and the bacon bits on top to be browned. And there you have it. I'm gonna put it in the oven and I'm gonna check it. After it comes out of the oven, you're gonna to wanna to let it sit aside for just a little bit to set it up. And trust me, this is going to stay hot for a very long time. Ooh, about spilled it out. I set my timer for 30 minutes because I'd rather go to, you know, have the timer stop a little early and then I can watch it for a few minutes after that than to um, set it for too long because it's always different. Sometimes when I cook it, it might take 35 minutes. It might take 40, 42 minutes. So I just watch it until it looks like I like it. Now that I've got that in and I'm going to wait my 30 minutes, I'm going to update you on what's going on with my kitchen. Everybody that knows me personally knows that back at the end of February, we suffered a flood in our kitchen and it ruined all of my cabinets on the floor. It ruined a lot of the flooring and a team of people had to come in because what we didn't know was the water was going between the layers of floor and it had been leaking for a while and we didn't know it. It was a dishwasher that kind of crapped out on me and the pump on it ruptured. I did not know that that was going on and so there was the potential for a moldy situation. They didn't detect mold actually, but they came in and they bubbled off my the area of the kitchen that was flooded for, I don't know, I can't remember if it was a week or two, and I wasn't able to use the kitchen at all. And they set up dehumidifiers and fans and, and had to pull up layers of floor. So we had to order cabinets, and we're still waiting on the cabinets to come in. They're due to ship the 15th of May, I do believe. So maybe by uh, sometime in June, I'll have my kitchen back to where I want it. I had just gotten my kitchen where I wanted it and this happened, but this will be the third time in 11 years that we have remodeled the kitchen. But anyways, in case you can see in the background, let me see if I can turn around. I'm still using an old base right here because I needed something beside the stove. 
but I've got drawers pulled out. I just never put them back in. They pulled them out to, to dry them. The floor is still out. I have a temporary sink on the wall so that I have use of, you know, some sink. And um, I do have my stove back in here. This has been <laughs> a real inconvenience for somebody who um, does a lot of cooking and spending a lot of time in the kitchen. I do, however, thankfully have, let me move this back, what wasn't, what wasn't injured was my 12-foot uh, countertop and new cabinets. Let's see if I can get it over here. And, and new cabinets, this run right here is a 12-foot counter. And so to keep that, the, um, the water didn't get that far. And so I have some functionality in here, but everything is kind of, um, you know, crammed together. I've got things on the counter that I just have nowhere to put um, for lack of counter space. Over here, there was a long uh, island here. That's gone, so I've got a temporary cart right here. And, you know, it's just a temporary situation that I have had to set up so that I could continue to cook and feed us while semi-operating. So anyways, um, it looks like the cabinets are going to come in sometime towards the end of May, and we'll get started on rehabbing this kitchen and maybe by the end of June I'll have everything done besides just the floor in the immediate area where the water damage took place they're having to replace all of my flooring which is a lot of floor just so the patterns can match so the whole house is getting new flooring as well so anyways I'll be back in a minute as soon as the mac and cheese is done so if you are looking for a good recipe and you're feeling a little adventurous, try this recipe. I promise you won't be disappointed. Okay, y'all, here it is out of the oven. Don't that look good? Oh my gosh, I can't wait to dig in. I let it sit for about five minutes, five to ten maybe, um, so it can set up. It ended up taking a full 40 minutes in the oven. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and cut into it. It has sat up a little bit. Look at that. Isn't that just delicious looking? Let me get it up here. And then we've got the bacon bits on top. Let's have some mac and cheese. Isn't that just gorgeous and yummy looking? I'm going to eat some now. This is for my lunch. I don't think I'm going to have anything else to go with it. I am going to serve this for dinner. I don't know yet what else I'm going to have to go with it. But this is going to be for dinner. And you know, it's not unheard of for us to eat some of this for breakfast as well going to be hot. Oh, that's so creamy. That is so good. Y'all, it might not be too late. You could make some mac and cheese and put it on your dinner menu tonight. Go ahead and try it. Y'all have a great day.